In this video, I show you how I save a ton of resin by hollowing my print files. But you should pay attention to a few things to avoid that your model cracks over time, like in this video that Charlie sent me. Or this one from Mark, where it took two years until uncured resin started to leak out of the print. I'm going to show you how I hollow my prints and what I look out for to avoid exploding models. I usually take Mesh Mixer, which I prefer over my slicer program Cheeto Box, because it shows me how the inside of the model will look like after hollowing. And I sometimes had the problem with Cheeto Box that there were weird artifacts and bugs when hollowing. So I hollow them in Mesh Mixer after scaling, adding magnets and cutting them before I finally slice them with Cheeto Box. When I started resin printing I chose a 3mm wall thickness, but nowadays I usually do something between 1.6 and 2mm, depending on which thickness creates a nicer wall. If I, for example, wouldn't want the fingers to have resin in them, I would increase the wall thickness until the fingers are solid. So you go to Edit in Mesh Mixer and then Hollow. Then you select the offset distance, which will determine your wall thickness. If you are satisfied with the result, click Accept and then the model is hollowed. Which you can see here, if I create a plane cut through the model, you can see the wall in green and the orange part is your void that has been cut out of the model. With resin printing, you need to especially look out for possible pockets that will trap uncured resin inside your printed model. The off-gassing of this uncured resin inside a printed model can eventually crack your print. And you really don't want uncured resin flowing over your model that you have spent hours on post-processing and painting. Now I want to show you something that I have noticed with a few models that I wanted to print. If we have a look at this hollow joker hat, we can see an even void in the middle. You put in a hole at the bottom of the key where the resin can be washed out and you are good to go. And you could also put a small hole in the hair so that the resin can drip out after printing, if you align him with the head facing down after printing. If we have a look at this hulk hat, we can see that the area around the mouth looks a bit odd. We hollow it out anyway and then cut the head in half. If you want to know how to cut, check out my previous video, link in the info box. Here we can see two potential issues. One is in the mouth. So the modeler has gone an extra step to model the mouth, although it's not visible. There is a tiny gap between the teeth, but you will have a hard time washing that out and the UV light will also have a problem to reach all the way into the mouth. So you need to make sure to put a hole into the mouth in the inside of the head to ensure that the resin can be washed out properly. Second issue is where the key is. With the way the modeler exported the file, the head and the key seem to still be two different objects. So the key is separately hollowed from the head, leaving a wall between the key and the head. So you need to put in one hole to get the resin out of the key and an additional hole to get it out of the head. And that's not an issue with Mesh Mixer, the same happens in Cheeto Box. So let me know if you know a way how to resolve this problem of actually having one object instead of two. And this is another point, you always need holes that the resin can get out and your IPA can get in to also wash the part properly on the inside. And I always try to put in as many holes as possible. That helps the UV light to reach the inside of the print better and the IPA can flow better through your part. And I always try to put at least some holes with 5.5mm diameter in my parts so that I can stick a wired UV LED inside them and also cure it from the inside after washing. And when I glue my parts together, I even try to have an L channel between them. So I try not to seal all the holes while gluing the parts together. With a small hole at an invisible spot to the outside, for example in the feet, you can make sure that no pressure can build up inside your model. Which shouldn't happen anyway if you washed and cured your print properly, but better safe than sorry. With this Christian Bale head, we also have the problem that the inside of the mouth is modeled with a large void, with only a tiny gap between the lips. So you again have to put in additional holes into the mouth. The heads were pretty easy examples, but when you have a complicated model like this pants, you can easily overlook resin pockets. For that you can use an additional tool called UV tools that I will show you now. First we slice our model like we would usually do. I'm putting a few holes in the top so that the resin can drip out and a few holes in the bottom to avoid suction caps. Then I quickly add auto supports, slice it and save the sliced file. Afterwards, we hop over to UV tools. I'll provide a link to GitHub where you can download it for free. Then we open the file and click on the issues icon. This is not going to be a UV tools tutorial. I just want to make you aware that it exists in case you haven't heard of it. For dedicated tutorials, you can check the video from Slice Print Roleplay or PTR Tech. I will also provide a link to those in the description. The processing takes a while, but it will also find a lot of issues. After processing is done, you can see and also fix different issue categories, which are islands, overhangs, resin traps, suction caps, and touching bounds. We are looking at the resin traps now. In one column, you can see the layers at which a resin trap was found, and on the right side, the area, so how large the resin traps are. We are picking the largest area now. The resin traps are highlighted in orange in the cross-section view. 
and with the bar on the very right we can scroll through the layers. And when we zoom out and scroll through the whole model we can see a lot more resin cups. So what we would need to do now is go back into G2Box and add holes at those places, or UV Tool provides the feature to fill in those pixels when they are too small to put holes into them with G2Box. And we can actually fix the issues by selecting all of them at once and then right click and select Fix Issue. With that, all the missing pixels that create a resin cup are filled. And you can see that the orange warnings on the right side bar disappeared. You can also manually select individual pixels for each layer and fix them by hand. So again, make sure to not only add holes on the outside of the prints, but also on the inside when you encounter something like this. And the last example that I noticed on an Iron Man torso print was this weird spot where the color looked different, and I thought there could be uncured resin trapped in a pocket. So I went back to my computer and checked the print file in Cheetobox. And then I saw that there really is a second wall in the model, and I was not sure if this tiny gap was enough to let the resin out. So I thought let's check it by drilling two holes into the spot. Which I could have saved myself if I had checked it with UV tools first. And now I have two holes to fill, which brings us to what I will show you in the next video, post-processing the prints. So if you don't want to miss it, make sure to activate the notifications by ringing the bell.